everyone. Namaste. Welcome back to Anthropos. I am Satashma. I'm Simone, and thank you for joining us for our eighth episode, Fragmented Connections. Anthropos was born to foster climate communication. We aim to spread awareness about environmental issues in a simple but effective manner. We have spoken to individuals from all walks of life, whether it be a scholar, a mountaineer, a conservationist, entrepreneurs, or an artist. However, despite creating this platform for effective climate communication, something that Satashma and I have con constantly talked about in the past few months is the lack of information about climate change in local languages. So there are six official languages of the United Nations. These are Arabic, Chinese, English, French, Russian, and Spanish. As important as this is, these six languages do not encompass the dialect of the majority of people who are exposed to the adverse effects of climate change. To talk about this more today, we have a special guest, Mr. Supun Lahiru Prakash, who has been educating the local communities of Sri Lanka on climate change in the local Sinhalese language. He is an environmental activist and freelance journalist. Recently, he has also been named as the United Nations Climate Change Learning Champion. Welcome to the show, Mr. Prakash. Well, uh, thank you very much for giving this opportunity. Uh, Before we start this episode, can you please briefly describe your climate change communication initiative in Sri Lanka? I got the opportunity to uh, uh, participate and uh, workshop uh, on climate change reporting. And uh, I found uh, uh, it is the most fundamental uh, challenge that uh, the global uh, is um, facing today. Uh, therefore, uh, I try to focus on my focus, my study uh, reportings uh, and works on climate change as well. Uh, in that uh, case, uh, uh, there was a nice uh, opportunity uh, uh, that I had was uh, United Nations uh, Climate Change Learn, uh, Learning Platform. Uh, it gave a uh, 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 nice uh, exposure, a kind of uh, knowledge, as well as recent uh, updates on climate change in the world. Uh, then uh, it uh, amplified my activities uh, as a reporter, as well as uh, as well as an environment activist. Uh, then I focused my study and writing on climate change uh, mostly, and uh, I, I have started a newspaper column uh, uh, as a climate talk. It will mainly focus on climate uh, related things, and I think it is the uh, first and uh, only uh, climate change related uh, newspaper column in Sinhalese language in my country. And uh, later, I uh, published these uh, the, uh, articles uh, in uh, blog and uh, it was also um, get uh, got, got, got a good um, reach. Uh, ultimately, <laughs> in 2020, uh, I uh, have been recognized as United Nations uh, Climate Learn Champions in the world. Uh, I am 10 of the United Nations Climate Learn Champions in 2020. And I'm the only one person uh, who um, won this title uh, in Asian country. Congratulations um, for being recognized by the United Nations. Um, and that's just incredible. And all the work that you're doing is that focusing on climate communication is really incredible as well. Um, so with this initiative um, that you've been recognized for by the United Nations, what are the different languages that you are targeting in Sri Lanka and what are the different audiences you are targeting? Yeah, uh, it's an important uh, question. Actually, uh, uh, in Sri Lanka, most of the people uh, are communicating in Sinhalese language. At the same time, uh, some amount of people uh, are Tamil speaking. Uh, therefore, uh, it is important uh, to uh, address uh, these issues in uh, Sinhalese and Tamil language. However, uh, I don't have the ability to uh, communicate in Tamil, unfortunately. Uh, however, uh, I uh, do my works in Sinhalese language. Uh, and uh, I have uh, uh, written uh, articles uh, on climate change to the local newspapers. Uh, therefore, uh, 
uh, those who uh, read uh, Sinhalese newspaper in my country uh, can be identified as uh, some of my audience. And also, uh, I have done uh, some school uh, programs and then, then school children uh, and youth, uh, particularly uh, environment, youth environment activists uh, could be identified as uh, my audience. So studies show that the best way to communicate climate change to people from the global south is to use local examples that people can relate to. For instance, we cannot really talk about melting glaciers and polar bear extinction and expect everyone to empathize with it. What do you have to say about this? And in your workshops, what kind of examples do you give? Yeah, actually, I totally agree with you. Uh, uh, we should uh, give local examples, I think, uh, because um, people don't uh, feel the things uh, if we talking about uh, the glacier melting and polar bears like things, uh, then uh, they can't um, they can't say, uh, make sense. Uh, therefore, I think uh, uh, we should uh, focus on uh, the local experiences. Uh, as we all know, uh, uh, at the moment itself, uh, uh, people in our country uh, and almost the entire world, people are suffering from different uh, uh, aspects of the climate change. Uh, for instance, um, for farmers, uh, people, fishing communities, uh, labors, uh, women and uh, children, uh, all the, almost all the sectors are suffering from uh, climate change. Uh, but the thing is, uh, they don't, uh, uh, most of the people don't know uh, the, uh, the relationship between their sufferings and the climate change. Uh, if uh, we can, um, if we can uh, aware, make aware of them, on uh, this kind of relationship, I think it will be uh, uh, good uh, for our uh, <coughs> effort to uh, improve the climate knowledge. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, Sri Lanka is uh, an Indian, uh, Sri Lanka is uh, an island nation in Indian Ocean uh, of the southwest coast of India. Sri Lanka uh, has a physically diverse geography and tropical climate. And uh, with a uh, land area of uh, more than 65,000 square kilometers and uh, about 1,340 kilometers of coastline, Sri Lanka is highly vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. Uh, and roughly 50% of uh, citizens living in coastal areas on west, southwest, uh, and uh, southern coast of the island. 25% of the people living in areas vulnerable to uh, sea, rise, sea level rise, uh, I mean uh, one kilometer uh, from the coast. Sri Lanka's coastal zone uh, face serious threat uh, from sea level rise caused by climate change, uh, which could uh, amplify existing hazards from tsunami and cyclones. Uh, being a small island nation with uh, rich and numerous marine and coastal ecosystems. People of Sri Lanka uh, coastline rely actually uh, heavily on fisheries uh, with nearly a quarter of million families mainly making their living on coast and uh, offshore fishing. Uh, coastal and eco coast ecosystem and livelihoods that depend on them are under direct threat from cyclone, sea level rise, sea surface temperature rise as well as uh, ocean acidification. Therefore, I think uh, if we go to uh, address the fishery communities, we can emphasize these kind of things. Uh, and if we go to uh, the uh, agriculture, uh, actually uh, Sri Lankan agriculture sector uh, comprises 7.5% of GDP and uh, occupies 28% uh, of the uh, labor force in our country. Uh, consequently, the adverse effects of uh, changing climate will create pressure on uh, Sri Lankan domestic market, food security, as well as export potential. The main crop in Sri Lanka, uh, rice, as well as tea, coconut, particularly sensitive to uh, variation in temperature and precipitation. Uh, variability um, in uh, distribution and amount of precipitation are the primary concerns of Sri Lankan agriculture sector. 
both uh, current uh, currently and the four uh, predicted conditions climate change of rainfall pattern and unexpected uh, period of high rainfall uh, and expect to strain the capacity of irrigation systems and increase the risk of uh, landslide in some areas uh, could be identified as some issues uh, uh, caused by the climate change uh, to the uh, farmer communities if we can go to the uh, farmer communities we can uh, point out this kind of things as uh, and likewise different different uh, examples uh, could be used uh, for instance uh, water for uh, water uh, as we all know water is the most uh, important uh, and uh, fundamental uh, right of the people however uh, uh, again water is also uh, affected by the climate change uh, actually availability distribution and use of water for agriculture human consumption energy generation and industry are all directly depend on climate conditions water availability is a critical concern particularly for drinking water climate change threats both uh, surface water and ground water sources and therefore we can use this kind of things uh, when we uh, disseminate the knowledge uh, to the uh, general public uh, then it will be easy uh, for them to understand what's going on and what are the impacts of climate change uh, other than using uh, the conventional examples i think Yes, we completely agree with you. And it's very important to use examples that the local people will be aware of instead of using the conventional ones. Um, so moving on to the next question. So talking about climate change often includes a lot of climate jargon. Like there are a lot of complex words being used like global warming, mitigation, adaptation, net zero. And these are very difficult terms. So how do you translate and explain these words um, in your workshops. Actually, uh, as you or as you uh, told, uh, these jargons are very uh, technical, and the people can't uh, actually understand understand uh, what are what these uh, these uh, jargons. Uh, at when we uh, translate them into our local languages, again uh, the same uh, situation, the same experience there. And therefore, I think uh, we better to uh, explain uh, in simple words uh, what is the meaning of the, this uh, and what is happening with this and with the examples. Uh, uh, if we uh, think about the adaptation and mitigation, they are the most important uh, technical words uh, related to the climate change actually. Uh, when it comes to the Sinhalese language, uh, we called uh, adaptation uh, is Anuhuru Vima. Uh, if we uh, tell uh, the local people uh, about Anuhuru Vima, uh, then uh, they uh, again uh, there was a big question mark uh, on their faces because they can't understand uh, the Anuhuru Vima. Uh, the same, say, all, the almost same the situation in, in, in telling about uh, adaptation and the Anuhuru Vima. But if we can, if we can say uh, the uh, the adaptation is this kind of thing. Uh, adaptation, adaptation is uh, getting ready to the adverse impacts of climate change and how we adapt to the, this kind of things. For instance, uh, uh, if we are suffering from lack of water due to the climate change, if we can uh, improve the reservoirs, if we can uh, improve the rainwater harvesting uh, methods, uh, likewise, if we can, uh, uh, if we can, uh, uh, if we can reduce the water uh, use and uh, if we can save our water, and these kind of things uh, will be uh, more effective uh, than uh, using uh, the technical terms to uh, make the people aware of. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, we are talking about uh, climate change. The world is uh, worrying about climate change, uh, but unfortunately, when it comes to Sri Lanka, I found in some instances, uh, Sinhalese reporters are talking about uh, weather change instead of climate change. I, uh, as we all know, there's no point of talking weather change instead of climate change. And then uh, that means they don't know the relation, the difference between uh, climate and weather. If they don't know the difference between climate and weather, uh, do they know about the mitigation? Do know, 
do they know about the adaptations then do they know about the intended nationally recognized contributions at all that's the thing and therefore we should, we should pay attention this kind of things when we dealing with the different communities uh, to disseminate this talent climate knowledge actually i'm um, following up with what you said right now, what do you think is the role of journalists in disseminating climate knowledge to local populations? Yeah, actually, uh, I think uh, journalists have uh, journalists uh, have a big uh, role to play in disseminating the climate knowledge. Uh, in one side, uh, they have, have to play a uh, teacher's role. Uh, to uh, uh, improve the climate knowledge among the uh, readers. At the same time, uh, he, he should investigate things related to the government policies and decisions actually affect the uh, climate change, uh, mitigation and adaptations. Then uh, they want to uh, expose these kind of things uh, through their media uh, works, reporting works. Then uh, they will be uh, useful uh, to uh, give the uh, adaptation and mitigation uh, decisions needed and uh, the policy uh, changes needed. Uh, these kind of things uh, could be led by the journalists actually, who are, other than uh, knowledge, um, disseminate the knowledge among the readers. So we would really love to know what the common perception of the local people in Sri Lanka is on climate change. So we heard about, you know, like journalists, like phrasing climate change, weather change. Um, so, you know, like in the world today, we have climate change believers and then there are climate change deniers too. So what do the local Sinhalese um, people and just the Tamil people in Sri Lanka think of climate change? Yeah, actually uh, <clears throat> most of the people in Sri Lanka uh, they don't care of uh, climate change that much. Now that's the main concern. Most of the people live in urban areas. Uh, the uh, people speaking in English language and mostly uh, in urban areas uh, like uh, Kalambu and uh, the uh, major cities, uh, they uh, know much uh, more about the climate change. They believe uh, that uh, climate change is uh, taking place. However, when we go to the rural areas, they don't know uh, about the climate change and they don't care actually because they have to struggle uh, to fulfill their basic requirements other than uh, talking about the climate change. That's why I think uh, when we go to Europe or America, uh, hundreds of thousands of people are involved in climate actions. But uh, when it comes to the uh, countries like uh, ours in Sri Lanka and most of the Asian countries, uh, very limited people are uh, engaging in climate actions. That uh, that is the reason behind the uh, that is uh, that could be the reason behind uh, uh, the lack of uh, act activities. The knowledge actually, the knowledge and the perception of the climate change uh, should be improved. Uh, that uh, that is the only way that we can uh, uh, engage more people in climate action and uh, that is that should be the uh, that 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 is the uh, way to uh, change the things uh, in uh, best way i think um talking about local people's perception right even though these local peoples might not know terms such as climate adaptation um they might be already actively participating in um, actions that are already contributing to as a part of like climate adaptations there are like community-based approaches that are happening so do you think local knowledge and experience plays an important role in climate change adaptation yeah actually uh, uh, global knowledge and practices are um, very much uh, useful uh, in uh, climate adaptation uh, but unfortunately most of these kind of traditional knowledge and practices uh, washed off with the time, and uh, that's the uh, most uh, serious uh, concern. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, in our country, we have had um, hundreds of thousands of uh, varieties of rice uh, uh, in the history. Uh, they are um, more vulnerable to the uh, more more. Uh, they are more um, resistant, actually, 
they are more resistant to the uh, rainfall and drought conditions as well as salinity uh, that kind of things but uh, with the time uh, we uh, throw this kind of uh, traditional varieties and uh, we uh, got uh, the we got uh, the uh, high yielding varieties so then uh, these kind of high yielding varieties uh, don't have uh, that kind of uh, strength or vigor uh, to face the adverse impacts uh, of climate change that's the issue uh, then uh, the, the thing is uh, another thing another major thing is the authorities uh, don't acknowledge uh, this kind of um, uh, traditional knowledge uh, and uh, the practices uh, that much that is uh, another major concern if they uh, care uh, things uh, if they acknowledge these things uh, then people uh, will try to repeat it with practice these kind of things but i think uh, nowadays uh, some scientists and uh, researchers uh, are working on these kind of things uh, they try to uh, expose the uh, scientific background of this kind of uh, traditional things uh, i think it, it, it is a good uh, initiative uh, this kind of initiative initiatives uh, could be more uh, could uh, improve uh, could be improved and uh, then it, we, we can find uh, the best solutions to the uh, climate change uh, through this kind of research and um, studies actually. Um, that, that is a really good answer but I actually have a follow-up to that question as well. So you know especially when like scientific data is not available do you think it and you only can really trust like the elder community members to recall like you know climate trends in the past do you think this is something that can be um, used in scientific research as well like i have an example as well like there was a study conducted in nepal where there weren't a lot of scientific data available so what the uh, researcher did was they went around and asked local farmers about their rainfall calendar that they had kept in you kept for their harvest season and they used that data so do you think um do you think scientists should you know trust local um, knowledge is their way of keeping data more. Would that empower local communities? Actually, it is a really interesting question. Uh, uh, I have personal experience as well. And they, uh, when we go to the uh, local communities, uh, the uh, elderly people, uh, they say uh, the rainfall pattern uh, is, was this kind in the, the past and it has changed with the time now. Uh, we are suffering from this kind of things but earlier there was no sufferings that like that and when we go to the uh, coastal areas people people uh, engaging in fisheries they say there are no difficult uh, piece, uh, uh, in the sea at all um, uh, therefore uh, the knowledge and the experience uh, uh, of the elderly people in the particular communities uh, uh, would be useful in uh, disseminating the climate knowledge because some instances, uh, as we all know, uh, if we if the people uh, tell uh, them uh, these kind of things more technically, they can't understand. But if uh, if the if the people living in the same community can share this experience with the others, with the young peoples, that then, then it will be more uh, effective in disseminating the knowledge. Then only the only thing that the uh, technical people can do uh, is uh, explain. Uh, these kind of things in a scientific way after uh, uh, mention the elderly people uh, what happened in the past and what is happening in the now and then what is the change lastly like you know when we don't recognize these traditions do you think with time these local knowledge local traditions local ways of doing things and culture will disappear of course, uh, I totally agree with you. Uh, at the moment, uh, it is happening in Sri Lanka and I think almost all the Asian countries because uh, with the with the conventional education system, uh, our education system refuses this kind of traditions, cultures, and the traditional knowledge. Um, as we all know now, uh, the developing world are searching this kind of traditional knowledge. But the traditional knowledge where it was in our country, they are washed off because they are not uh, acknowledged 
uh, at the past, uh, then uh, they, uh, this kind of tradition knowledge uh, disappearing with the time. Very in very uh, limited uh, instances, uh, people try to uh, secure this kind of traditional things. Uh, but almost all the uh, areas, these kind of traditional uh, practices, knowledge are uh, 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 vanished with the time. It is a, a very pathetic situation. How do you or how should communication be crafted for different audiences? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, as we uh, already know, uh, climate knowledge uh, uh, is mostly generated in English. For instance, um, almost all the reports, for instance, IPCC reports uh, and uh, almost all the technical documents uh, are generated in English language. Uh, but uh, the thing is, uh, when it comes to the countries like ours, uh, our English proficiency is very low. For instance, uh, when we consider about the English uh, Professions Index in 2020, uh, we are in uh, uh, number 68 out of 100 countries. Uh, it means uh, we are in low proficiency category. Uh, if uh, our proficiency uh, in English is very low, how we can uh, get the knowledge and up actually update, updated information about the climate change uh, by uh, reading this kind of things. Therefore, I think uh, disseminating uh, climate knowledge in local languages is very, very important. Uh, when we come to, the Sri, come to Sri Lanka, uh, uh, Sinhalese and Tamil languages are uh, more, most common languages. If we can disseminate this knowledge uh, by uh, this kind of languages, uh, then uh, it is uh, uh, easiest. It is the easiest way uh, to disseminate this kind of language among the communities. We can use actually different different uh, things uh, to disseminate this language uh, in local languages. Actually, uh, for instance, uh, if we can uh, add climate change into the uh, school syllabuses, it will be uh, more effective because uh, from the beginning of uh, the um, life. Uh, people, uh, if the people can can have the chance to get uh, an idea about the climate change, it will be more effective. Other than that, uh, we can use uh, different different uh, methods uh, to the different uh, different uh, um, age groups. For instance, uh, for youth, uh, we can. Uh, uh, we can use um, active participation uh, methods uh, like uh, workshops uh, and practical sessions in the fields uh, to get an idea about the uh, climate change and how the climate change affects the day-to-day -day lives of their, um, their professions and their environments like wise. And uh, for the general audience, uh, we can use uh, television and radio programs, uh, document films, uh, and very short uh, video clips. And uh, at the moment, uh, as we all know, social medias are very strong and very popular among the youth. Uh, they, therefore, we can use this kind of things to disseminate uh, climate knowledge uh, among the uh, people. Then uh, they will <coughs> make aware of and uh, ultimate result will be more climate action in the future. We have reached the end of the episode, any, but thank you so any, much. Any your... one more last question? <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. Actually, I am very interested. Uh, I am very happy uh, to uh, share my uh, experience and the thoughts with you. It was a great opportunity for me too. Uh, and thank you very much for giving, giving this valuable opportunity. And uh, please uh, share uh, the links and uh, professional materials with me then I can uh, share these things uh, with my uh, social media platforms and uh, it will be uh, uh, helpful to uh, improve the reach of your uh, your uh, podcast and uh, YouTube channels like this. Thank you for listening to our episode. You can listen to our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor, and other platforms. You can also find us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Links to these platforms will be in the description box below. We will also attach reference links in the description box. See you next month.